So what rocked Roosevelt Island? We are following reports of building shaking, small explosions and power outages that could have been caused by an earthquake. Yeah, people in parts of Queens and Roosevelt Island, they heard that loud boom this morning. They thought it was an explosion. The recent U.S. and British Virgin Islands earthquakes left the residents shaken to their core. What started as unexpected vibrations and movements quickly turned into a nerve-rattling experience. As panic spread through the islands, fearless firefighters stepped in to provide much-needed assistance. Their swift and efficient response to the seismic event was nothing short of heroic, bringing hope and comfort to the shaken islanders. Join us as we discuss the recent terrible earthquake in the Virgin Islands. Anagata, Britain. The British Virgin Islands, with spots like Anagata, and the US Virgin Islands, with locations like Astoria, have had some spine-chilling encounters with visiting earthquakes. There's a belief that these parts of the Virgin Islands tend to be shaky. It was confirmed that a big earthquake, like a 5.1 on the rumble scale, made waves in the ocean near the British Virgin Islands around 1027 on December 9th. It set its epicenter about 9 km north of Anagata Island. The ground shook a little in places like the British Virgin Islands, the US Virgin Islands, Anguilla, St. Martin, the St. Martin area, and parts of eastern Puerto Rico. Surprisingly, there were no reports of things breaking or people getting hurt due to the earthquake. It didn't seem like a big deal, at least at first. The big shots mentioned they might need a few hours to check everything out and see if there's any damage, especially in faraway spots and hidden areas. To do that effectively, they considered stopping trains and other things that move in the shaky area to check if anything got messed up or damaged. They suggested there could be a few little problems during this time, but if everything's okay, things should return to normal smoothly. They also mentioned that the lights might flicker, especially in the place where the earthquake happened, so they checked every little detail to have everything corrected. Near Roadtown, Britain. In the early morning hours, an earthquake of shallow magnitude 5.3 rattled the vicinity near Roadtown in the British Virgin Islands, based on the United States Geological Survey findings. The seismic event, striking on Sunday, May 8, 2022, at 9.32 a.m. local time, occurred at merely 20 kilometers. Shallow tremors, being closer to the surface, are generally more noticeable than deeper ones. It's important to mention that the exact magnitude, epicenter, and depth of the earthquake might be subject to potential adjustments in the hours or minutes following the event, because seismologists are set to tweak their data and other agencies may pitch in their reports, potentially causing adjustments within the next few hours or minutes. Seismologists diligently scrutinized the data, fine-tuning their calculations, and awaited reports from other agencies to confirm what happened and exactly how it happened. The European Mediterranean Seismological Center released a second report, recording the quake at a magnitude of 5.2 thereby introducing a variation in the reported magnitudes. Various agencies, such as the Citizen Seismograph Network of Raspberry, reported the earthquake at magnitude 5.3, and the German Research Center for Geosciences reported theirs at magnitude 5.2. All the agencies provided their assessments of the same seismic activity. Before feeling disordered and wrecked due to the figures and their variations, it is best to know that early information indicates that this tremor, despite its numerical display, most likely didn't result in significant damage. Instead, it provided a gentle tremor near the epicenter, leaving a mild vibration for those nearby to feel. Astoria, Queens, U.S. They examined potential power disruptions associated with a quake to probe a commotion on the island. The U.S. Geological Survey verified a 1.7 magnitude earthquake in Astoria, Queens. Following the inquiry, officials suspected it was the reason for buildings shaking and explosions rattling things. Residents reported sensing the ground shake from Astoria, Queens to the Upper East Side. Authorities described the explosion as so forceful that it induced fear literally tossing people out of bed. The Office of Emergency Management surmised it could be a 1.72 magnitude earthquake experienced by residents beneath Astoria, Queens. 
Families frantically dialed the emergency number 911 at approximately 6 a.m. on Tuesday, recounting numerous explosions wreaking havoc on their buildings. Chopper 2's airborne footage displays the first responders gathered around 580 Main Street, just south of the bridge and tramway. Confounded firefighters and Con Edison crews circled buildings just south of the Roosevelt Island Bridge and tramway for hours. They even popped open manholes to see manhole covers and see what was going on, but they found nothing. And it was quite a mystery for quite some time. Neighbors were eagerly anticipating an explanation. The earthquake tremors struck at 5.45 in the morning, about five kilometers deep, near Astoria. People felt as if they were in a building that was bouncing. Beds were shaking and sinking, and numerous firefighters were visible at the window. The New York Fire Department checked the area, and Con Edison took charge around 4 p.m. The good news is that Con Edison confirmed no power outages were linked to the earthquake, even though it felt like a bomb or something was exploding. Other folks mentioned it felt like the room moved and the walls seemed to vibrate. These sensations were experienced from Astoria to Roosevelt Island on Tuesday. The U.S. Geological Survey stated they recorded a 1.7 magnitude earthquake in Astoria in the morning, just before 911 calls started pouring in about booms and shaking buildings. Seismologists explained that low-intensity micro-earthquakes are common, usually going unnoticed. However, the one in Astoria was shallow, only about five kilometers below the surface, making it more perceptible. The rocks in that area were robust, efficiently transmitting the earthquake waves. So, unlike in California, even smaller quakes could be felt in the eastern United States. Before confirming it was an earthquake, it was a real puzzler. Numerous 911 calls reported explosions, prompting the fire department to respond. They searched the area, including several buildings, finding no signs of fire or probable cause for the reported explosions. Initially labeled as unfounded, they handed the matter over to Con Edison, whose emergency crews probed into the potential source of the shaking. Eventually, the United States Geological Survey cleared up the mystery, reporting a magnitude 1.7 earthquake. It took a bit for officials to officially confirm that the earthquake caused worries among residents, such as the explosion sounds and booms. They responded to reports of small explosions on Roosevelt Island early Tuesday morning. However, they soon declared the scene under control without a clear cause. After a while, the mystery appeared to be cracked, all thanks to the U.S. Geological Survey reporting the earthquake. Within an hour, the situation settled. Yet, the New York Fire Department crews were still unable to pinpoint the cause of the loud boom. There were around 60 fire and medical personnel present. The chief of staff of Mayor Eric Adams mentioned that the mayor's office was awaiting further confirmation following the announcement from the United States Geological Survey about the earthquake, another historical earthquake in the US or British Virgin Islands. The 1867 Virgin Islands earthquake and tsunami happened on November 18th at 2.45 in the Anagata Passage, magnitude 7.5, about 20 kilometers southwest of St. Thomas, Danish West Indies, now U.S. Virgin Islands. The magnitude 7.5 earthquake occurred just 20 days after the devastating San Narciso hurricane in the same area. The tsunamis from this earthquake were some of the tallest ever recorded in the Lesser Antilles. Wave heights exceeded 10 meters on some islands in the Lesser Antilles. The earthquake and tsunami caused no more than 50 fatalities, although hundreds of casualties were reported. The U.S. Virgin Islands are part of the Greater Antilles, which lies parallel to the Puerto Rico Trench. In this oblique subduction zone, the North American plate is under thrust beneath the Caribbean plate along the Lesser Antilles subduction zone and transitions to strike slip along the Septentrional Orient Fault Zone. Due to this shift, the overriding Caribbean plate starts to extend and normal faults begin to break out. Subduction and shallow crustal faults pose earthquake and tsunami risks to the area, although the Lesser Antilles megathrust has not experienced any major earthquakes along its subduction interface. A potential earthquake along the megathrust may have been the magnitude 8.3-1843 Guadalupe earthquake. The earthquake had two shocks, with a 10-minute gap between them, and the two tsunamis followed 10 minutes after each shock. The shaking lasted about a minute in Frederickstead, 
where the earthquake kicked up a dust cloud that covered the town. The shaking reached a strong level of IX on the Rossi Forel scale in the Danish West Indies. Similar nine-level shaking was felt in the British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and the US Virgin Islands. Survivors reported two distinct shocks, 10-15 minutes apart. On the modified Mercalli intensity scale, the intensity ranged from severe 7 to extreme 10. In Puerto Rico, the earthquake caused heavy damage to parts of the city wall of San Juan, leading to the demolition of its southeastern portion afterward. Fajardo, the largest town in Puerto Rico, lost its church and several civic structures near the earthquake. The historic parish churches of Bayamon and Juana Diaz also suffered damage from the earthquakes. An aftershock with a magnitude of 6.5 occurred on March 17, 1868. There is uncertainty about its timing, either at 7.15 or 1915 local time, as several reports documented it happening in the morning, while one reported it in the evening. It most likely occurred in the morning, and evening was a typographical error. It was felt with a maximum modified Mercalli intensity of very strong sykes, and a 1.2-meter tsunami accompanied the shock. At St. Thomas, the initial wave was like a straight white wall, about 15 to 23 feet, that moved towards the harbor, arriving 10 minutes after the earthquake. The wave picked up steamers on its way and broke just a few feet in front of the town. The height of the water reaching the town was 9.1 min. A smaller wave followed shortly after and went further into the island. 30 people died when the waves carried them away. Run-ups of 6.0 oh mem were seen at Charlotte Amelie, where 12 people lost their lives. The La Plata, a steamship serving the Royal Mail Steam Packet Company, was overwhelmed by the tsunami, resulting in the deaths of nearly all its crew. Little Saba experienced the highest waves at 15.2 meter. A U.S. Navy ship that had arrived the day before the USS DeSoto was torn from its moorings and stranded. The second wave then brought the damaged ship back to sea. At Christiansted, St. Croix, waves of 7 to 9 meters drowned five people and flooded the island up to 90 meters inland. The tsunami destroyed 20 houses and left numerous boats stranded inland. In some areas of the island, the waves reached a height of 14.6 meters. On the same island, Frederickstead was hit by waves up to 7.6 meters. The surging seawater stranded many vessels, including a U.S. Navy ship, USS Monongahela, along the beaches of Frederickstead. The tsunami waves were 12 meters high on Water Island. Meanwhile, at Roadtown, British Virgin Islands, the waves were between 1.2 meter and 1.5 meter, sweeping away much of the low-lying towns. In Antigua, the sea level rose 2.4, 3.0 m at St. John Harbor. Eyewitnesses in Basse-Terre, Guadeloupe, saw the sea receding and returning, flooding up to 2.0 mem. Deshaies was hit with very high waves, estimated at 18.3 meters in height and a length of 5 kilometers. The tsunami swept away many personal belongings and items. In St. Rose, however, the waves were determined to be no more than 10.0 oh bilam when a church said to house fleeing survivors located 10 meters above sea level remained undamaged. In Puerto Rico, wave heights of 1 to 6 millimeters swept through the island's coast. Have you ever dropped your phone and felt your heart drop with it? Well, worry no more. Our tough phone cases are here to keep your phone safe and sound. Like the firefighters who kept the residents safe in their time of need, our iPhone tough case will protect your phone and ensure it sustains no harm. With its durable and shock-resistant material, you can rest assured that your phone will be protected from damage. So why wait? Get our iPhone Tough Case today and keep your phone looking beautiful for years. Discover them right now by clicking on your screen or checking the first link in the description. Thank you for watching this video. While you are still here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.